that fight the knock. Page 196. Great book called Neff Fight North by Daniel Lowe. We've been digging on it, my noggin. Let's go. In any case, it would seem that someone within Lehi's group was of the tribe of Levi. Was this necessary? I do not know. This temple was built not long after their arrival, and shortly after they had separated themselves from the Lamanites, also having moved further inland and to the northward or today's west. Second Nephi chapter 5, verse 5. And it came to pass that the Lord did warn me that I, Nephi, should depart from them and flee into the wilderness, and all those who would go with me. Wherefore it came to pass that I, Nephi, did take my family, and also Zoram and his family, and Sam, my elder brother and his family, and Jacob and Joseph, my younger brother, and also my sisters, and all those who would go with me, and all those who would go with me were those who believed in the warnings and the revelations of God. Therefore, they did hearken unto my words. And we did take our tents and whatsoever things were possible for us and did journey in the wilderness for the space of many days. And after we had journeyed for the space of many days, we did pitch our tents and my people would that we should call the name of the place Nephi, wherefore we did call it Nephi. And all those who were with me did take upon them to call themselves the people of Nephi. And we did observe to keep the judgments and the statutes and the commandments of Hawa and all things according to the law of Moses. I felt it important to stress verse 10 for a future reference herein as it would seem that of all things considered as sacred to these people and most remembered would be the events that took place and the commandments, the code that were given to them to observe which will again be shown in a later people. Now, sticking to the subject at hand, it is necessary to take a jump into the future. In order to do this, let me say that in this recording, from the point in time of the building of this temple in the manner of Solomon's temple, I could find no other clues that could shed any light on this subject. In about 600 AD, at the D at the decline of these people who are suspected of having possession of the ark according to another people and their origins and migration stories that being the Aztec they talk of migrating from this place near where this temple like unto Solomon was built it is suspected that the very people referred to as the Alegui A -L -L -E -G -W -I, by the the Nape Indians are the people of Nephi and that they were also those who were responsible for many earthworks found in the eastern part of the country in the Mississippi Valley and in the mountains of Utah. They were those who eventually became the Aztecs. Well then we must be talking the Eber, the Eberu right here in Quiveria, Managa. According to the migration stories, the Aztecs are the descendants of these people. It is well documented within their history. As to the place of their origins, there are many who have referred to them as being two separate peoples, huh, like northern southern tribes, Managa, with each 
having different places of origin depending upon the first time or the time frame that is referred to. One group of seven families came from the Great Tower at the time of the confusion of tongues. They came across from Asia. Well, where's Asia, my not? These are the people whom the Asian race came from and are today. Stop. <laughs> Come on, man. Known as the Alta Mongolians. Uh, they being the children of Japheth, one of the sons of Noah. A part of these people came to the continent and arrived on our west coast in approximately 2400 BC. At another point in time, a place in the western parts of America around the Arizona area or the Udall, Judah, Judea, I mean, is considered to be another point of origin. This did not take place as a result of the first event, but a latter one. The second group that joined to make up the Aztecs was the Alegui people, mound builders, or Nephites. Hold up. Okay. <laughs> this is the kind of connection we've been looking for. With a dragonfly, 360 degree perspective. I mean, we're just falling back, man. We're just surfing the wave in the water. And y'all enjoying, you know, the new flow. I mean, we are getting, uh, you know, a beautiful new wave going on over here. And, you know, just, just relax and enjoy the water. Because I want this to feel like, you know, <laughs> like a beautiful, uh, you know, water park, my nugget. <laughs> a place to always go to get that water, you know. And a lot of our, a lot of our flow, you know, from here forward, man, it's going to be the water. You know, I want to have... <laughs> That water flowing, man, um, as much as possible, you know what I'm saying, so that we know we can get it. If we're not getting that water, you know, we're getting that Yosef the real, that Tekub say, that Yahana die, you know, that tied back sign, you know what I'm saying. You know we're charging up with that Ma, you know what I mean, you know, that that is the way, that is the water, you know what I mean. So, just, just uh, you know, look out for us, my you know what I'm saying. You're being framed and shaped in real time for the fourth way, which is all about. That wall. Yeah, get it, let like, get it. So when they talk about coming from a great tower, I mean, you know, we got that Wyoming tower, that Devil's Tower, they got these are these are trees, man. These are giant trees, man. Giant trees. So let's pick it up from here. They said the mound builders or Nephites. So we're talking uh, Solomon, the mound builder. We're talking the seven hundreds, eight hundreds, man. To the kids of cold on my night. Hey, we love to Yosef, man. Yosef's doing. Yosef, man, you doing yapa work, man. Breaking down the Caesar's Messiah, the typologies, the reflections, the phantoms, the duplications. It takes a hard type of knock, a hard type of knock <laughs> to bang his head, you know what I'm saying, right there, you know, on the frontal lobe of Hijack City, my knock. And my knock is banging his head, man, right, you know, headstrong, right to the hijack, you know what I'm saying. Go dig on that Caesar's Messiah, Yosef Darrell. Energy frequency toe kept but not. Make sure you in that classroom, man. And it's new time, man. Monday, eight o'clock Pacific time, ten o'clock Central. Can you dig it? This bro's doing great work breaking this down, man. Cause you know they can't go nowhere, man. Anatoly for the man go. <laughs> they can't hide, man. Fake noggers can't hide no more, man. So they try to, you know. They try to run around with this uh, this timeline on us. It's always saying, but Solomon and David and Daniel, all this is popping off. I'm not gonna like recent history, 1200s, 1300s. You know what I'm saying? Nine, ten hundreds at the latest, and even that, you know what I'm saying, is a reflection of something in the 1200s, 1300s, 1400s. What do you know about the 1400s for real? For real? What do you know about the 1500s? For real, for real, for real, for real. 
Well, you know about these high Amazon queens, my naga, that was just discovered. Islands full of Amazon queens by Colombo and them in the 1500s. Come on, man. They These queens with the war with a naga. These are the Presta queens, my naga. You know what I'm saying? The priest queens. Tribes of Sheba. You know, tribes of Khalifa, my naga. The real one. We got alliances with our real ones. We know how to pop off in cold. And now we back, my noggin. Look yourself in the mirror. Say, I'm back, my noggin. Look at your noggin. You know what I'm saying? Beside you, say, I'm back. You know, go go text the noggin. You know what I'm saying? That ain't heard from you in a minute. Text their ass and say, hey, hawa, we back. Because they can't run. They can't hide. They can't go nowhere. We got them narrowed down. We got them in the timeline. Hey, we got them frozen in the timeline. So they can't BC us 2400 BC. Da, da, da. Stop it. Stop it. All this is happening a lot faster and a lot more recent. And if you really understand this Atlantis Moo War, my naga, all that is recent, man. We we just we just fell from high tech, high tech. This ain't no dancing around the fire. You know, <laughs> images they're giving us, man. Yeah, we can do that too and pop off, but my naga, high tech, high tech. Golden condors. We back in the cities of gold. We back in the cities of gold. Because no matter how much they try to jam us up, my naga, I, I get it. I get it. Because you don't know what it takes to get through a day in my life just to sit here and do this drop right now, man. You know how much hijacking static I got to dodge just to do this drive with you right now? Same thing for the whole entire Ether squad. And I know it's the same for you just to sit there and get the drop. Just to surf the wave, you got to dodge all this damn static and hijack. Every day, man, you fight for your life. Every day, you got to mourn over something. Every day, man, you got to hear somebody tell you about something that might happen and could happen and should happen and might happen and could happen and should happen and might happen and could happen and should happen, my noggin. I get it, man. We just popping off, man. We popping off together. Ain't nobody got the answers, but we're learning to ask the right questions. We investigators, man. You want more out of me? You want more out of us? Well, first, you got to see what we investigating. And you got to see what the value is when you observe, observe the code and collapse the wave pattern on paradise, my naga. Observe the code and collapse the wave pattern on paradise, my naga. Say it with me. Observe the code and collapse the wave pattern on paradise, my naga. Pop off, man. We got that water. And that fight to knock. Well, they just told us Nephite is Israel, my God. We're talking about the commandments of Hawa. The Nephite connecting to you, dog, or really Kaleluz, who they call the Alegui. Alegui, Alegwa, Alegwa, Alegwa. Hey, we breaking that stuff down with this picked up paleo, man. Look out for us, man. Let's pick it up from here in page 196. In the middle of the last paragraph, it says the second group that joined to make up the Aztecs was the Alegui. Or the mound builders or the Nephi. So when I say Nephi, the Naga, my Naga, I'm saying mound builders, the Nagas. 
We popping up. All right, so, you know, sometimes we can learn from the Mormons, right? The Mormon. Remember, Mormon is a person according to their documents. Mormon is a person. Mormon. <laughs> <coughs> Let's get this drop. They joined with the first group of seven families and eventually became the Aztecs. May I suggest a book compiled by Dewey Farnsworth. Farnsworth called the Americas before Columbus, wherein he has compiled hundreds of quotes from the early historians who had walked and talked with the Aztec, and in some cases quoted from the Aztecs themselves. So this author is Dewey Farnsworth by Naga. We got to get this drop. Dewey spelled D-E-W-E-Y Farnsworth, F-A-R-N-S-W-O-R-T-H. And the book is called The Americas Before Columbus, wherein he compiled hundreds of quotes from the early historians who walked and talked with the Aztecs, and in some case, quoted from the Aztecs themselves. Also, the works of Vichia, V-E-Y-T-I-A, and Tezo Zomok, T-E-Z-O-Z-O-M-O-C, would be good reading. So he's putting, he's putting some... Some breadcrumbs out there, man. We got, we got a nice little trail, man, with them particular authors. Uh, Veshia, V-E-Y-T-I-A, and T-E-Z-O-Z-O-M-O-C. Tozo Zomak. All right, he's suggesting that. So let's go get it. The reason for filling this gap in time is to bring you some statements documented of the Aztecs pertaining to the subjects. The statements are as follows. Let's go. Found in the pages of Peruvian Antiquities by Mariano Eduardo de Rivero y Ustar Riz, translated to English in 1853, we find on pages 9 through 10. But that which most tends to fortify the opinion as to the Hebrew origin of the American tribes is a species of ark, uh oh, seemingly like that of the Old Testament. This the Indians take with them to war. It is never permitted to touch the ground, but rest upon stones and pieces of wood, it being deemed sacrilegious and unlawful to open it or look into it. The American priest scrumptiously guard their sanctuary, and the high priest carries on his breast a white shell adorned with precious stones, which recalls the Urim, U-R-I-M, of the Jewish high priest, of whom we are also reminded by a band of white plumes on his forehead. Anaga, this is from the Peruvian Antiquities by Mariano Eduardo de Rivero y Ustariz, U-S-T-A-R-I-Z. Translated to English in 1853, my nigga. Is it play play? So there's levels to there's levels to the wake up game. You know, there's there's levels to wakey wakey. There's levels to this. And when you connect to your indigenous orientation that they took you from here, that they flipped your maps, that they flipped the story, that they can flip the story and will flip the story, and why they would flip the story, because you got your symbola. Your Shimbala, your seven cities of gold, your Sheba, my nine. Peace of the Queens. Oh, wow. Kan Kan. Kan Kan. So it says the reason for this filling the gap in time is to bring you some statements documented of the Aztecs pertaining to this subject. So when we talk Aztecs and Kitsukoda, we're just talking the Hebrews, man. The tall text, we're talking Hebrews, which means we're talking who my nage, not Jewish. I ain't talking about black ish and cool ish and good ish. If I want some good food, I don't want some good ish food, my nage. So don't get don't bring me the Jewish. 
I want the Judah, the Judah, the Hawaii. And we're getting about these Aztecs. What? From the Peruvian antiquities. That which tends to fortify the opinion as to the Hebrew origin of the American tribes. Not the hijack city today looking hijack city today, but these black, so-called black gangster as, you know, what I'm saying, you know, smoking on this pack and that pack. You know, what I mean, all this disrespect, all this shit going on. You nigga, you nigga, you nigga. This is for you. You the copper color race found here. You the. American, you the 1828 definition, American definition is the copper color races found here. You're the copper color Amaru Khan. You are the Khan. You are the priesthood. You are the Hebrew. You are the Judah. This is Judea. This is Eden. This is all that. This is all that. Columbus knew he was pulling up on that Orinoco flow. That Mount Rorima flow. What tower, my naga? What tower were they coming from? Would Mount Rorima be a tower? Would these tall trees be towers? Let's go. So they're talking about you, my naga. The Hebrew origin of the Amaru Khan is a species of Ark, seemingly like the Old Testament that the Indians take to war with. They take it to war. So this is the Ark. And then they got the priest with the, you know, precious stones around his neck. And he got the white plumes on his forehead. Huh? Like a plume serpent or a plume dragon, right? Or a kitsu. Whether this is the actual ark or some species of art, we cannot know at this time, but we can plainly see that they had knowledge of it. Could the following be another species of art? Speaking of the Algonquin tribes and those of the West, we have the sources called The History of Ancient America by George Jones in 1843, page 13 through 15. The Northern Aborigines have a traditional knowledge of the deluge and of the dove of peace, which to them under the name of the medicine or mist or the mystery bird is sacred from the arrow of the hunter. They have their Ark of the Covenant in which is deposited some mystery seen only by the priests of the tribe. It is said to be a shell and supposed to give out oracular sounds. <laughs> This is an analogy to the book of the laws placed in the Ark of the Covenant by Moshe. Preceding his death on Mount Nebo, the oracular wisdom of which has guided civilization to this day, the Ark is never suffered to touch the earth, but is always raised on a stand of wood or stone. It is invariably carried by a tribe when they march to battle. A similitude, a similitude is here to Joshua at the siege of Jericho. When it is in their peaceful encampment, it is surrounded by 12 stones, indicative of the original number of the tribes of their ancestors. This is strictly in analogy with the 12 statues, probably rude blocks of stone erected by Moses around the altar of the covenant to personify the 12 tribes of Israel. Joshua also, after the passage of the Jordan, erected 12 stones in this encampment at Gilgal and the same number in the river at the place of the passage. They select their medicine men, i.e. priests or prophets, from among a portion of the tribe, not warriors. Here is the custom of the Levites or descendants of Aaron being in the sacred office of priesthood. For with the Israelites, they were not to be taken for the rakes. From the ranks of the soldiery, these aborigines dwell in booths as when brought out of the land of Egypt, for they are still wanderers. They offer a flesh or burning 
burnt offering from the chase, which is the first cast into the flames before even a starving family may eat. They have their corn and harvest feast, also one in observance of every new moon, another in festivity of the first fruits and the great feast in direct analogy with the Hebrew Passover. Even to the blood being stained upon the post and lentil, and the mingling of the most bitter herbs. Then their fasting and purifications are practiced with the greatest severity. The breastplate or the ornament worn by the religious prophets containing twelve shells or stones of value is in direct imitation of the ancient pectoral worn by the Hebrew high priest. So this is a whole separate, you know, uh, source, Managa, a whole nother witness to this high priest. So when they're writing back saying they got a bunch of savages here, are they telling them that these might be Hebrews? Are they telling Queen Isabella and all these people over there, uh, you might be annihilating the children of Hawa, the Hebrews, the tw the, the 12 tribes, we found them. Let's go ahead and sick our dogs on them and, and rip their babies apart and hang their women upside down and pour vinegar into them. Let's torment them and crucify the children of Hawa. Let's torment the children of Israel. Let's torment the Hebrew. Did they write back and say that or did they say we got savages and monstrous looking people and all this stuff so you're gonna have to get your head on straight hey it's the fourth wave but not <laughs> we just surfing the way Get a little bit more for the dismount. So they know they pulling up on Hebrews. We gotta get back in this thorough, thorough good drop. Uh, I mean, he was talking about. They said the greatest pondery to them, you know, is who or where did these American tribes go or come from, and you know. Where did the 12 tribes go? You know, these are the greatest questions that they got in their academic uh, circles. You know, where did these 12 tribes go? And who are these, you know, who people the Americas? Like, you know, who are these people? And it's the same question. Just put in your face that they know exactly who you are. Columbus brought a Hebrew interpreter, Louis Torres, to even speak to you. Columbus brought a Hebrew interpreter to speak to you. Let that sink through your mind. Now, now dig on the Preston John investigation. Now go to Hosea 3 and understand and understand while we seek Hawa and Kandawi. While the search for David is on because they're already searching and you got to search harder than them or not. Because they want the vortex. They want the keys to the land of Preston John. Shambhala, right? They want the seven cities of gold, my name. Septimania, right? The breastplate or ornament worn by the religious prophets contained 12 shells or stones of value. It is in direct imitation of the ancient pectoral worn by the Hebrew high priest and which contained 12 precious stones inscribed with the names of all 12 original tribes of Israel. They have their cities of refuge or huts or safe safety where the most deadly foe dare not enter for his victim. 
So when we talk about, you know what I'm saying, Choose Up Village, and we're going to talk some more about tough cities and establishing tough cities, you know, under a, a Tribe Up Foundation. We call it TUF, Tough Tribe Up Foundation. And I uh, love to brother nature, man. Love to the battles. I mean, you know, this is, it's a flow. You know, all praise the wild. We taking step by step, man. But we're talking tough cities or we're talking safe cities. We're talking refuge, my nigga. This is already in us to do this. Yeah, you dig? This ain't me popping off. It's in you to do this. To put our resources together to have safe cities. Refuge. Since they have their cities of refuge or huts of safety where the most deadly foe dare not enter for his victim. They never violate a female captive. And upon the Hebrew principle that their blood shall not be contaminated by interunion that has been strictly followed in all their wars with the European. <laughs> so when they say you've been mixed out and mixed out, how you been mixed out so much, but it was in our traditions not to mix with them. So there's got to say, oh, we raped that many women, but then what happened to the male seed? The woman's not carrying the seed, so if they do rape our women, they're not putting our seed in them. They're putting their seed. What happened to our seed? What they forced every uh, uh, naga, they forced them to, you know, have sex with all the European women. I mean, come on, man. That means our seed is untainted, my naga. That means we still here. We ain't been mixed into all this mixed into that. We still here. We still here enough. You dig? We still here enough. We ain't no second rate nothing. We ain't no African American, watered down African. No, my nugget. We are the Hebrew you just found here. And even over there, they know who we are. They say, oh man, y'all are the aboriginals, you know, of America. Khan. And who's who's that? The Hebrew. Khan. Got it. The land of Preston. John, David, the real Ethiopian. Lego for the dismount. Net fight the knock. Mound builder the knock. We popping off. Fourth wave, my knock. They always reject the savage practice of civilization upon the lofty principle of manly virtue. So whatever civil, they say we're doing a civilization. We've been civilized, man. That's not, that's not a lofty principle of virtue. That's not a virtuous principle to say we're going to go over there and civilize these people. No, my naga, we got code keepers. You dig? Either you are or you're not. We don't need to civilize you. Either you keep the code, that's going to civilize you. It would seem that these people certainly had knowledge of the ark, the way of the Israelites, and all that pertained to them. How is it that these writers from the 1800s seem to have had this information, and it appears that today's scholars don't? I have never seen these quotes in modern books with the exception of Dewey Farnsworth's book. From Hewitt Edgar Lee's book, Chaco Canyon and its Monument, 1936. The Ark of the Covenant appears to have been known on the excellent authority of Adair, remember James Adair, Long and Noab, N-O-A-B. So these are all authors that have their own recon and have come to the conclusion that the Indians have knowledge of the Ark of the Covenant. And then Columbus brings a Hebrew interpreter to speak to you. And then you got the land of Preston John. You got Preston John in the British Museum in 1530, my nigga. <laughs> 1530. 
literally with Preston John over Arizona. And Columbus is looking for the con. And the Indians and in India Superior have knowledge of the Ark of the Covenant. I mean, you see the circular, you know what I'm saying? You see how they want you to go in circles, man. But when you got the drop, you can spiral up. You don't got to go in no more loops, man. You ain't got to go out in no more circles, man. You ain't got to be in the Matrix no more, man. You ain't got to be in that matrix no more, love to the bro. So, whether you're talking James Adair, whether you're talking Long and Noab, American historians and ethnologists, we are informed that the Western tribes of the North American Indians kept a holy chest or ark, which they were want to carry into the battlefield when hard pressed by their enemies. Long says this ark was placed on a sort of frame carried on men's shoulders and was not allowed to touch the ground. To uncover it was strictly forbidden. Three men who were of curiosity attempted to examine its contents and were struck blind on the spot. And that's the that's the Naga you know what I'm saying story. That's not even talking about, you know, no no biblios, my not. So it appears that we already home. We just getting the breadcrumbs, you know, and just listening to the sound, enjoying the vibration over the information. And like I said right here, I want this to be that water. You know, we still gonna get our music popping and do our drop producers. We still gonna do our drop artists. I'm still, I'm just being framed and shaped, man, by the frame and shaper with this. I want to, I want to be at our best, man, with what we got. I want to perfect it. And uh, just that energy hit me and said, yo, you know, make, you know, first I said, man, let's just do a, a full water app. We, we might still going to do that. Just have another app where we just do all water, you know, our water, you know, our water with no interruptions. But even before we get that popping, I want to have that right here. You know what I mean? Right now. So this is going to feel like you're just in the water. You know, you can expect that water when you come here. And then popping up out that water like islands. You know, you're going to have that Yosef to real, you know, that Ty Badzon and that flow coming out. And all the great content is going to pop up out that water for you. And then you're going right back in that water and just, you know, get that Zon Zon. Because... We at war, it's a frequency war. And that's the most powerful element, man, that high water. All praise of what? The water for surfing wave with a naga, with another flow of Nephi, the naga.